Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everyone, I am Hemlata Kanniyappan doing my research under the guidance of Dr. Vignesh Muthuvijayan. Today I will be explaining about bone tissue engineering. I will start with a brief introduction about bone and its functions. What is a bone? Bone is a substance that forms the skeleton of the body. To be more clear, it is a natural composite material that is composed of organic collagen phase and an inorganic hydroxyapatite phase. The hardness of the bone is mainly due to the presence of hydroxyapatite which is composed chiefly of calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. Whereas the toughness and the viscoelastic behavior is mainly due to the presence of collagen. The major function of the bone as we all know it is the it, uh, it makes the foundation for our bodily locomotion and it acts as the load bearing capacitor to our skeleton. It protects the internal organs. It also owes the biological elements that are required for hematopoiesis, which is the process that are responsible for the formation of blood cellular components. It traps the dangerous metals, for example, lead. And also, it maintains the homeostasis of key electrolytes, whereas like it maintains the equilibrium between the uh, cellular components. In addition, of above all the function, bone is engaged in a constant cycle of resorption and renewal. That's why we call it uh, call bone as a dynamic in nature. So the defect in bone and the treatment of bone defects due to severe trauma or several pathological disorders like bone tumor or infection possesses a major threat to the surgeons worldwide, and it is a serious health problem, global health problem. Amongst the transplants made, bone is considered to be the second mostly transplanted tissue after blood. Bone loss due to damage is a serious challenge to our orthopedic surgeons, especially when the bone loss is massive. Bone grafting uh, is the commonly used surgical method to enhance bone regeneration. Over 2 million bone, pro uh, bone grafting procedures are performed worldwide in every year. The treatment of bone grafting includes autografting, whereas where we graft a tissue from the same individual, it is considered to be the gold standard treatment because of its ideal biocompatibility in terms of structural as well as immunological point of view. And the second higher option is allografts, where we graft a tissue from different individual of same species. Though autografts or allografts are considered to be the standard treatment for bone grafting, but in autograph, it requires the harvest of, harvest of site, it not only increases the pain, but also increases the time of surgery, bleeding and donor site morbidity. It also uh, leads to nerve injuries at multiple harvest sites due to surgeries. Whereas in cases where we need a large amount of tissue to be transplanted, it cannot be done using autograph procedure because the availability of the tissue is limited. Whereas in allografts, it is associated with pathogen transfer and also immune rejection. So we need a better option, treating option to enhance bone regeneration or to repair the bone defects. We need an option where it overcomes the all other above set limitation. Tissue engineered synthetic bone substrates were developed which will ideally eliminate the above said limitation and aims to develop an ideal bone graph that enhance bone regeneration. Before getting into uh, tissue engineering aspects of our bone tissue engineering application, its status, issues, we need to understand the anatomy of bone. So in this session, I will be explaining about the anatomy of the bone and the modeling and remodeling of the bone. Then the later session will be discussing about tissue engineering aspects. The anatomy of the bone, the first gross anatomy. Gross anatomy means the study of anatomy of the bone at the visible level. The structure of long bone explores the best visualization of all parts of the bone. The long bone is divided into two parts, diaphysis and the epiphysis. The diaphysis, 
the tubular region that runs between the proximal and the distal ends of the bone. And the hollow region in the diaphysis is called as medullary cavity which is filled with yellow bone marrow. And the walls of the diaphysis is made up of hard and dense compact bone. At the wider section of the e, uh, wider sections at the e, uh, at the bone, at the each side of the bone is the epiphysis. It is filled with uh, red marrow and uh, the it is filled with spongy spaces. The cavity is filled with spongy spaces and red marrow fills these spaces. And each uh, and epiphysis connect to the diaphysis at the metaphysis. Metaphysis is the narrow area which has epiphyseal growth plate and then cartilage layer, island cartilage layer. This epiphyseal growth plate becomes an epiphyseal line when a bone growth stops at an early adulthood for approximately at the age of 18 to 21 years and the island cartilage layer replaced with an osseous tissue. The inner uh, the medullary cavity the intramembranous is made up of intramembranous lining delicate membranous lining called end osteum where it is the place for uh, bone growth repair and remodeling occur which where I will explain bone growth repair and remodeling in detail what are the cellular components involved in in later session uh, later part of this session and the periosteum the fibrous membrane cover the outer surface of the bone it has blood vessels nerves lymphatic vessels that nourish the compact bone this periosteum covers the entire outer surface of the bone uh, outer surface of the bone except at the epiphysis region where it has articular cartilage and this acts as the shock absorber and reduces the friction whereas flat bones like cranium it is made up of a layer of a spongy bone and lined on either side of the layer of the compact bones so the layer of spongy bone and the two layers of the compact bone works together to protect the internal organs if there is any fracture in the outer cranial uh, bone still the brain is protected by the inner contact layer of the compact bones and the surface features of the bone bone markings there are three general classes of bone markings articulations projections and holes as the name implies the first class of bone marking articulation as the name implies where two bone surfaces come together these surfaces tend to conform to one another such as one being rounded the other being coupled or uh, other being curved in order to facilitate the function of articulation articulation means joint for example knee joint and the second bone marking class general class is called as uh, projections it is an area that projects above the surface of the bone tendons and ligaments are attached to, uh, attached to the periosteum to this uh, through this marking for example the process of uh, Spinous process of vertebrae is an example of projection kind of bone marking. And the third general class of bone marking is holes, where it is an opening or groove in bone that allow the nerves or blood vessels to enter the bone. For example, foramen, where the blood vessels passes through the bone. The next we, uh, we need to discuss about bone cells and tissue, which plays a major role in tissue engineering aspects. We need to know about what are the cells present in the bone. So, uh, as I explained in the introduction session, bone is made up of collagen and hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite gives the uh, gives bone their strength and hardness, and whereas collagen gives them flexibility. If hydroxyapatite is not there, the bone will become more elastic. If collagen is not there, the bone will become brittle. Bone is composed of smaller volume of cells. Although the bone composed of smaller volume of cells, it plays a very important role in the in its function. There are four types of cells: osteocyte, osteoblast, osteogenic cell, and osteoclast cells. Osteoblast cells are the uh, bone cells responsible for the formation of bone. It is present in the growing structures and it is called osteocyte, and which is the primary cell for the mature bone. And the places where the osteocytes located are called as lacunae. Osteocytes maintain the mineral concentration within the matrix. Osteoblast and osteocytes communicate with each other and exchange their nutrients through the long cytoplasmic processes via canaliculi, 
which is uh, canaliculus which is present inside the bone matrix. Both osteocyte and osteoblast lack mitosis. Then there rise the question, if both the cells lack mitosis, how are they replenished when old one dies? The answer lies in the third category, third property of cell which is osteogenic cell. It is highly undifferentiated cell and it is present in the deep marrow or uh, present in the deeper regions of periosteum and marrow cavities. It is the only bone cell that can divide. It divide and differentiate into osteoblast cells. So, uh, while explaining the function of bone, the last function where I said bone as bone is dynamic in nature, which means the new bone is constantly formed and the old bone that or the damaged bone or the repaired bone should be resolved con continuously, which was which is done by the cells called osteoclast cells. Osteoclast cells are responsible for bone resorption. So, there should be a constant balance between osteoblast cells which are responsible for the formation of new bone and osteoclast cells which are responsible for the bone resorption in order to maintain the structural integrity of the bone. So, this reviews the uh, cell type, its function and location in the bone. First cell type is osteogenic cells. As I said, it is the only cell that can divide and it develop into osteoblast. It is present in the deep layers of periosteum and the marrow. And the next is osteoblast cells which are responsible for the formation of bone and present in the growing portions of bone including periosteum and endosteum. Osteocytes which, uh, which are the primary cell for a matured bone and the location where it is uh, located it is known as lacunae and it maintains the mineral concentration of matrix which are entrapped in matrix. Osteoclast cells are responsible for bone resorption and it is present at the bone surfaces and at sites of old injured or unneeded bone. These osteoclast cells are formed from monocytes or macrophages which are two white blood cells. They are not originated from osteogenic cells and the details of compact and spongy bone are well explored by its histology. The compact bone is the stronger bone of the two and it gives support and protection and it is denser stronger than the spongy bone. It is found under the periosteum and diaphysis of the long bone. The microstructural unit of compact bone is called as osteon. It is called as osteon. Each osteon is made up of concentric rings of calcified matrix. This is also called as Avasian system. This osteon is made up of concentric rings called uh, lamellae, concentrated rings of calcified matrix which are called as lamellae. Okay. Running towards the center canal of the osteon, center to the osteum, it is the central canal where central canal where it has blood vessels, lymphatic vessels and nerves. This is also called as uh, avasian canal and this uh, blood vessel nerves and branches off at the right angles through the oxman canal or perforating canal which connects to the periosteum or endosteum. The osteocytes present in the lacunae are found at the adjacent of the lamellae of the osteons. So, as I explained earlier, the nutrients exchange is done by canaliculi. So, one canaliculi is connected to other canaliculi eventually to the central canal where it has these blood vessels and uh, lymphatic vessels and the osteocytes, the osteocytes is nourished with the presence of this blood vessels, lymphatic vessels and uh, trans nutrients are transported through the central canal. Whereas, spongy bone, it is also called as cancellous bone. Unlike the uh, compact bone, spongy bone is not made up of concentric rings, whereas it is made up of lattice-like network of matrix spikes called trabeculae. This provides strength to the bone. The spaces in some spongy bones which that contains red marrow which are protected by the trabeculae where hematopoiesis occurs. Hematopoiesis is nothing but the process of formation of blood cellular components. Blood supply and nerve supply to the bone. The spongy bone and medullary cavity receive nourishment from arteries that pass through the compact bone. The osteocytes, the arteries enter through the nutrient foramen which is the small opening that present in the diaphysis. 
the osteocytes present in the spongy bone get nourished by the blood vessels and the arteries that enter through the periosteum and into the marrow cavities. Once it passes through the marrow cavities and it is collected by the veins and it is passed out from the bone. Similarly, nerves also follow the same paths into the bone where they tend to concentrate in the more metabolically active regions of the bone. Nerves also sense pain. The nerves also plays a very important role in regulating blood supplies and bone growth. So, uh, with this uh, the brief explanation about or the detailed explanation about uh, uh, bone anatomy is done. Now, we move on to the formation of bone which is modeling and remodeling. Bone is first initially bone is formed by modeling. It is developed in two distinct ways intramembranous pathway and endochondral pathway. In either of the cases there is a mesenchymal cellular condensation occurs and it serves as the template for the formation of bone. In first intramembranous bone where mesenchymal stem cells are directly developed into osteoblast cells. and subsequent bone formation occurs. For example, bones uh, in uh, mandible, clavicle or few cranial bones are formed by this process. Whereas, in endochondral bone, uh, endochondral pathway where most of the bones like long bones in our body occurs uh, formed through this pathway where the mesenchymal progenitor cells developed into chondrocytes. First, they are developed into chondrocytes. Then they form a cartilaginous layer, cartilaginous matrix, classified mat calcified matrix, then the subsequent bone formation occurs. So, these are the two pathways where the formation of bone occurs. Then the remodeling of bone takes place. We know that the skeleton is a metabolically active organ that undergoes continuous remodeling throughout the life. This remodeling is necessary in order to maintain the structural integrity as well as to maintain the mineral uh, concentration within the matrix. Remodeling of bone begins at the early fetal stage and also once the skeleton is fully formed in young adults. Afterwards, all the metabolic activity will take place in this form. This remodeling consists of highly regulated series of uh, this consists of series of highly regulated uh, steps which involves the interaction of two cell lineages two cell lineages they are mesenchymal osteoblastic cells and ometopoietic osteoclastic cells the interaction between mesenchymal osteoblastic cells and Ometopoietic osteoclastic cells, precursor cells, leads the uh, is the start of the remodeling phase. And there are four phases in remodeling of a bone: activation phase, resorption phase, reversal phase, and formation of the phase. The first phase is the activation phase, where uh, the interaction between the two uh, precursor cell lines happens. So, which results in the formation differentiation fusion of uh, and formation of the large osteoclast cells, osteoclast cells which are present at the surface of the bone matrix. These cells will tend to secrete hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions as well as the lysosomal enzymes especially cathepsin C, cathepsin K, cathepsin K. These two will degrade all bone cellular components including collagen at low pH. And this is the resorption phase. The resorption phase the, where the cells uh, interact with the hematopoietic precursor to form osteoclast and the reversal phase the complete resorption takes place. The complete resorption of bone by osteoclast takes place in the reversal phase and initiates the formation phase. In this formation phase mesenchymal osteoblastic cells will form will start to produce osteoblast which which fills the cavity which are resorbed by the osteoclast thereby it lay down the bone matrix. So, this this how the remodeling of bone occurs. The first is the interaction of between two precursor cell lines which is um, hematopoietic um, osteoclast cell and um, uh, mesenchymal osteoblast and then they form the osteoclast cells. This osteoclast cell involved in bone resorption 
and it resorbs the bone matrix completely whereas there is an uh, formation of osteoblast cells which fills the cavity of the bone resorbed uh, matrix. So, this is how bone modeling and remodeling formation of bone occurs. If there are any abnorm abnormalities present in this bone remodeling will lead to various skeletal disorders. For example, osteoporosis, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism and hyperthyroidism, Paget disease, orthopedic disorders, osteopetrosis. These all the skeletal disorders which are due to the abnormalities happen in the bone remodeling cycle. So, osteoporosis, osteoporosis is defined as the loss of bone mass and strength which leads to the increase in propensity to fracture. It is type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is called as postmenopausal osteoporosis and type 2 is called as senile osteoporosis. Recently studies of literature have proved that deficiency of estrogen which is the uh, important systemic hormone for the bone turnover. If there is deficiency of estrogen, it leads to osteoporosis. So, this uh, deficiency or uh, the osteoporosis uh, reasons can be mainly due to three reasons. One, the peak, peak bone mass is not formed completely or there is an imbalance between osteoclast uh, function and osteoblast function or the overactiveness of osteoclast like over uh, you know, osteoclasts are activated too much thereby it resorbs bone more than the bone formation that is osteoporosis and Paget disease again the complete mechanism or the clear mechanism is not at uh, understood but they say that the because of some viral infection this osteoclast cells are activated abnormally and thereby bone resorption is more where it changes the structural uh, structure of the bone where it shows in the evident in that uh, picture that is Paget disease. In osteopetrosis, osteoblast function is lost, loss of osteoblast function, bone formation is not that great when compared to bone resorption. So, there should be a balance between the formation of bone or the uh, resorption of bone in order to maintain a proper shape of the bone, otherwise it will lead to a variety of skeletal disorders. So, now I will be explaining about uh, normal process of bone healing. So, bone once there is any fracture bone can itself heal by its uh, process. It can be repaired by the process of both intramembranous and endochondral bone formation. It uh, first it starts with the hematoma formation accompanied by the inflammatory response then it start recruiting the signaling molecules for example, interleukin, fibroblast growth factors bone morphogenetic proteins which are responsible for the formation of bone. Once after recruiting signaling molecules at the place of cortex and periosteum intramembranous formation bone formation immediately occurs. Then it uh, stabilizes the fracture by the formation of callus which is under which, which uh, by uh, chondrogenesis. Chondrogenesis is the activation of chondrocytes which is highly similar to endochondral ossification. Then once the tissue reaches its maturity, the chondrocyte proliferation decreases and the calcify the matrix, the growing blood vessel which carries chondroclast and osteoblastic progenitors. This chondroclast will resorb the calcified cartilage and whereas the osteoblastic progenitors will help in the formation of new bone and the remodeling of new bone will start. So, that is why it uh, yields the repair or fracture. As we know that bone is highly vascularized tissue though it can heal by it, uh, itself beyond certain point or beyond critical point clinical intervention is required. Where uh, the future treatment option is uh, uh, bone tissue engineering, bone tissue engineering is considered to be the future treatment option. In next session we will be uh, uh, discussing about its uh, status or key components involved in the bone tissue engineering. Thank you.